I've had a lot of requests for the Pixel 2 XL. When a new phone is released, I don't normally test both sizes, since they are usually made by the same company, and the structure and materials are the same. But when Google makes phones, they divvy out the phone construction, and the Pixel XL has a different manufacturer than the regular size Pixel, so the construction is different. Google has approved both versions of the phone though, and slapped their name on it, so if anything goes wrong down the road, Google should be the one to take care of it. Let's test the Pixel 2 XL. I'll admit that I was a little mean in my regular size Pixel 2 video. I don't take back anything I said of course, but I will try to point out a few benefits of the Pixel lineup during this video. Google has advertised Gorilla Glass 5 on this 6 inch OLED display, which we already know scratches at a level 6, with a deeper groove at a level 7, all verified here by our buddy Mo. One big perk of owning the Pixel 2 phone is the front firing stereo speakers. If your face is always pointed towards the screen, the sound should also point right back towards your face, just like with a TV or at a movie theater. It just makes sense, and the Pixel 2 has that. The speaker grills are made from a thinner style of metal screen, but it is secure, and it's better than the white cloth that we saw last year, so thumbs up for that. The front camera is protected under the front glass of the screen. Down here around the back of the phone, we have our branding, the letter G. Now the old Nexus phones had a problem with the Nexus lettering falling out of the back plastic. This metal G is inlaid and glued pretty hard into that G slot in the back of the phone. Even digging at it with my razor blade, it was difficult to remove, so I really doubt it's ever going to fall out on its own. Now the back surface of the phone is the same material that we saw on the Pixel 2, and can be scuffed up by keys. This coating, or thick paint on the phone, is very similar to plastic. And the marks are permanent. They don't rub away or disappear like we saw on the anodized aluminum of the OnePlus 5T. It's very important to never put your keys and phone in the same pocket or purse. Using the Mo's picks on the back of the phone, we start seeing very permanent damage at a level three, same level of hardness that plastic has. But you know, if you treat your phone extremely well or put a case on it like a normal person, you won't have to worry about any of this. One huge perk of owning a Pixel phone is the unlimited original quality storage for pictures and videos online up until the end of 2020. After that, you still get to keep what you've uploaded, but the deal only continues to include non-original quality picture storage after that. So it is a great thing, but it doesn't last forever, kind of like the dinosaurs. Rex was looking a little too much like Barney over here, so I added some teeth, and now he's looking a little better. You know, our class with Jerry stuff. The coating applied to the back of the phone wraps equally along the sides, and it feels good, and looks really good. Even if it is a bit softer than the normal metal or glass that we normally see on flagships. The same thick paint covers the volume rocker and power buttons. The razor blade of truth exposes the metal underneath both buttons, which is interesting because the colored button on the kind of blue Pixel 2 was plastic. Once again, plastic is not a bad thing, it's just good to know what is where. Speaking of what is where, the headphone jack is still not here. But hey, if you're into that kind of thing, party on. I just hope that your party speakers are all Bluetooth. The camera is also something that Google excels with, combining all that portrait mode stuff into one pretty high quality sensor is quite the feat and it is protected with real glass, and has a metal lip surrounding the lens. I've heard a lot of good things about this camera. The fingerprint scanner can still get scratched up, it's not ceramic or anything like we saw in the OnePlus 5T, but this time around the fingerprint scanner does keep working after my abuse, so if the scratches are all superficial, it should still function. The Pixel 2 XL screen lasted 10 seconds under the heat from my flame, and it's interesting to note that the regular size 2 lasted 15 seconds. I honestly don't think this five second difference has any indication of potential burn-in between display manufacturers. It just could be the angle of my flame. I would need to burn quite a few more pixels to test this theory, but it's still kind of interesting. Maybe someday we'll find an actual use for this burn test. And now the bin test. Checking the structural integrity of the phone, the Pixel 2's water resistance was compromised by a badly placed antenna line that cracked and could separate under pressure. With this Pixel 2 XL, there is some minor flex, but there is no splitting along the frame of the phone when bent from the front or the back. It remains solid. Here's another quick look at the weak point on the Pixel 2. Keep in mind that the weak point isn't a deal breaker. A phone would be totally fine under normal circumstances. It's the accidents and the abnormal circumstances that we are planning for here with my videos. And judging by the look of it, the Pixel 2 XL is a little bit better prepared for the abuse cell phones sometimes endure. The main thing to watch out for with the Pixel XL is the plasticky paint coating that's a bit softer than metal. 
but with a little protection on your very expensive investment like a case or a skin, and you'll be just fine for a pretty long time. While this phone isn't going to be my daily driver, it's still going to be a really good phone for a lot of people. Let me know what phone you want to see tested here next on my channel. Rex wants you to subscribe for my future videos, and he thanks you a ton for watching. We'll see you around.